Hi, welcome to the TEDDY TV and thank you so much for being part of the TEDDY jury this year. Could you start with introducing yourself and to talk a bit about the work that you do? Okay, so thank you for having me. It's been fun, it's been a good journey, a busy journey, but it's been fun so yeah. far. Uh, I'm Heitor Augusto, I'm a curator, film critic, lecturer and translator based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I'm, in the, I'm an independent curator, which means that I basically put programs together and I pitch to film festivals, you know? So I'm very much committed to queer narratives and basically, uh, queer narratives and black narratives, you know? Yeah. Uh, trying to bridge a lot of connections between what's happening in Brazil and in the world. So for example, right now I'm putting together a program on queer experimental films throughout the Americas, you know, but focusing basically in the US and in Brazil. So I'm not necessarily attached to the film festival, yes. but rather working with uh, multiple, multiple film festivals, uh, film clubs, community screenings. So that's pretty yeah. much my, my yeah. thing, you know. Nice. And through all this work, because you work very closely with films from many different perspectives and through many different channels, how do you see the queer cinema landscape of today? Fortunately, diverse. Yeah, I see it, for example, calling it queer, it already points at the diversity, you know, we used to call it, not just call it, but we used, we used to label it depending on sexual orientation and seeing the queer cinema as queer cinema actually expands our understanding not just around theme yeah. and topics that the films touch upon, yeah. but also on the aesthetics, on subjectivities, you know, so yeah. is there, for example, to me that's a great question, you know, what, is there a queer sensibility that can be translated yeah. through aesthetics. So I think that there are a lot of films in the queer uh, landscape that have been investigating that. Of course, we still have films that are committed to not just talking about the struggle of coming out, the struggle of living as queer uh, in society, but, but they're also investigating queerness as an aesthetic project. In the same way, for example, that there are uh, black filmmakers or women filmmakers investigating uh, if with, if we could say women is, as an aesthetic project and blackness as an aesthetic project. So I see, I see the queer uh, landscape as fortunately diverse and there's, there's a lot of opportunities out there, there's a lot of possibilities out there, so I'm very yeah. intrigued and interested. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think about uh, queer cinema as activism? Do you, would you agree that it could be seen as such? And what do you think, where does the political power of queer filmmaking lie? Uh -huh. Uh, of course I see it as activism. Every time that you have a quote-unquote minority filming, and especially filming ourselves, is an act of activism, it's a political act, you know? Yeah. And I see queer cinema, one of the roles that queer cinema play, of course, it is uh, with activism, yeah, is, it is a, a, a work of activism as well, is raising awareness, giving visibility. So it feels like when we're talking about cinemas that are labeled, queer cinema, black cinema, women's cinema, there are a lot of responsibilities. The burden is a lot, you know, so the, bur the burden, the possibilities and the potential uh, is a lot. It feels like there's always a lot of things to solve, you know, you have to be a film but then you have to be aesthetically groundbreaking, yeah. but then you have to represent the community. So what I'm trying to convey is here, convey here is that when talking about queer cinema and other identity cinemas, if we could call them this way, is there, there are a lot of layers involved in the very act of, of filmmaking and of making yeah. a film. Yeah. In past years, we, we've really seen many, many very interesting and very diverse films coming from Latin America, yeah. queer films. What do you think, what is behind this, this resurgence of, of queer filmmaking in Latin America? Actually, I wouldn't call it a resurgence. I would call just film festivals from the north uh, being finally aware and open to the films mm -hmm. coming from the south yeah. and specifically from Latin America. Yeah. Uh, it's a region that is so complex. I know that we could say that for every region in the world, yeah. but specifically Latin America. There's so much tension yeah. and there's so much inequality and there's so much prejudice. When you have those things, you have, of course, resistance. And when you have resistance and you have certain perspectives that used to be called third world perspectives, you have creativity. 
So we've always had that. Yeah. And speaking specifically of Brazil, we can trace queer cinema like back to there are some scholars that could, that would argue that we can find queerness in Brazilian cinema back to the 30s, yeah. even to films that were not seen as queer back then. But I find it great that the North is acknowledging it, and the fact that the North is acknowledging it, to me, is connected to diversity in the film teams, yeah. in the film programming teams, yes. for example. But, but I, don't see, I don't see it as a resurgence, but rather uh, a continuity. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is a surge of there's a surge of newer voices. Yeah. Speaking of Brazil, for example, we have a lot of black queer voices, and to me, the strength of the Brazilian cinema, cinema especially in the short film format, and especially in queer short film yeah. format, is coming from black voices. So, so I'm just digressing, but I, what I would say is it's not a resurgence; it's just a continuity. And now we're acknowledging these films are gaining gaining uh, visibility. Yeah, right. And finally, I was also wondering. How do you think, or what do you think, how will your background influence your decision making within the Teddy team this year? Wow, that's a great question. I'm, I'm, well, I'm sad that we only have a short time to answer that, but I think everyone's background influenced their decision, you know? I, I believe in a, I, I truly believe in positionality. <laughs> Whatever you come from, Whatever your position in society, whatever is your gender identity, if you're cisgender, transgender, if you're black, white, Asian, whatever yeah. race you are, if you're, if you're from the north, if you're from the south, I mean, positionality, positionality influences a lot on the way that, not on the way that you take decisions, but on the way that you perceive things. And one of the things that I'm already enjoying about the Teddy Award is that we have different perspectives. I know that can be cliche, but we do have different perspectives. You know, we have, uh, we have women, we have men, we have people from different colors, from different races, not colors, but races. Uh, we have people coming from different areas of the, of the world. So I know that I bring perspectives, but I also know, and I've already experienced, experienced throughout these, these days, that my fellow juries, they bring their experiences as, as well, and they bring their perspectives, how we're going to convey these perspectives, how are, is, is it going to be, are we going to agree or we'll have a tough time making decisions? Yeah. I mean, time will tell, but I'm pretty excited about this coming together of, of perspectives. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today and I wish you all the best for the deliberation. Thank you. I know it's a, it's a gigantic task ahead of you. <laughs> but I'm sure that it's all gonna go well. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much.